<clears throat> so let's talk about why associations don't always mean causation. And the real reason for this is that there's going to be another variable that is actually causing the relationship between the two variables that we see. So a confounding variable is what that variable is called. So it's a third variable that is associated with both the explanatory variable and the response variable and could be the reason for the association between the two variables of interest. Okay, So it's a third variable that is associated with both the explanatory variable and the response variable and could be the reason for the association between the two variables of interest. So if we scroll up to here and we look back at main and the divorce rate, right, and I'll just, I'll just erase all that stuff, we see that actually there's this third variable down here, and this is time. We see, in fact, that over time, both the divorce rate in Maine is going down as well as margarine consumption. So year is going to be associated with both Maine's divorce rate and margarine consumption, right? So as year is increasing, the divorce rate is going down. As year is increasing, the margarine consumption is going down. And so in this particular case, this sort of time series of data can be explained by just the fact that both the divorce rate and consumption is going down. So in that situation, we would say that year is a confounding variable. It's that third variable that's related to both of them that is responsible for the relationship that we're seeing. And if you go to that spurious correlations website, you're going to see a lot of interesting correlations that are really just caused because of the fact that you have this time, this third variable in here, time. And so it's really common to have variables that change over time to show that they're related to one another. So I could really show any variable that decreases over time as sort of being related to any other variable that decreases over time, because it's just an artifact of time. So let's go back to this uh, slide we were just at. So <clears throat> let's try to think about what might be a uh, confounding variable for a couple of these uh, scenarios down here. And I should also mention, we'll spend some time in class on, um, on uh, well, we'll spend some time in our next class talking about some of these scenarios and you'll have an opportunity to sort of interact with some of your classmates on them. So I would encourage you right now to pause the video to read what could be a confounding variable for and then these three different scenarios and see if you can think about what might be a confounding variable. Okay, so it says an association between shoe size and vocabulary. All right, we talk, I think we... No, we didn't talk about this one in class. Um, so what this might mean is that if your shoe size is small, then your vocabulary is small. If your shoe size is larger, then your vocabulary is larger. Well, this is quite something, uh, this is something that's quite uh, uh, potentially problematic, right? Because maybe this is saying that, you know, if, if, as an adult, if you are taller, you're going to have a greater vocabulary Whereas if you're shorter, which I am a short person, so that means my vocabulary will be smaller. Well, in this particular situation, if you want to think about why shoe size and vocabulary might be correlated with one another, well, maybe there's age in there, right? Younger, younger people, you know, young kids, school, uh, grade school kids, they have a smaller shoe size. They also have a smaller vocabulary. Adults have larger shoe sizes, and then they have larger vocabularies. So that might be a confounding variable for that association. More ice cream sales have been linked to more deaths by drowning. Okay, well, when do you eat ice cream the most? Probably during the summer. When are you swimming the most? Probably during the summer. So maybe the third variable could be time of year. That confounding variable could be the time of year. People who own a yacht are more likely to buy a sports car. So is this saying that yacht owners are more likely to buy a sports car? Probably not. It's probably saying people that have a lot of money, more disposable income, are more likely to buy a yacht, and they're also more likely to buy a sports car. 